use the other Exide battery in my garage. I have chosen to heat my garage this season, so it's not terribly cold in here. Uh, it's just above freezing. I just keep it above freezing. So it should be zero degrees if you really wanted to test the cold cranking amps of a battery with a conductance tester. This will test the marine cranking amps because 32 degrees is marine cranking amps. So I'm going to test this same type of battery purchased at the same time with the same date code, same lot code, been treated the same throughout almost all of its life. And this battery is cold and you can see that the resistance is a little bit higher. And that's to be expected. Also the voltage is higher when it's colder. That's pretty normal. And uh, 700 cranking amps. This is rated for 675 marine cranking amps. So once again, this meter is almost spot on with what the battery is rated for. I have one more test that I'd like to do on a bad battery, a known bad battery. Let's see if this thing can tell me that the battery is bad. This is the battery that starred in my how to desulfate batteries properly video, and I'd encourage you to watch that one if you haven't already. Uh, it's not as straightforward as many people on the internet would claim. There's a lot more to it. But uh, this battery was not successful in desulfating it. Now, most people would say that, it, that the desulfation was successful because this battery could start a car. You could run an inverter off of it. You could do anything with this battery that you could off of an ordinary battery. It has a reasonably low resistance. It can output large amounts of current. It takes a charge just fine. It behaves very normally, but it behaves like a battery that is half this size. And a battery that's at 50%, in my opinion, is bad. So let's hook up this meter and see if it shows that this battery is bad. One of them on negative, the correct one on positive. I'm not sure what happens when you swap them. If a fuse blows or this thing smokes, hopefully it's protected. I'm not going to test that. And we'll see what it says for this known bad battery. And there we go. 12.9 <clears throat> volts, 5.46 milliohms. That's lower than a lot of automotive batteries, but not good enough for me. 533 cranking amps. Well, that's rather impressive. I know that this battery from discharge testing has about one half of its capabilities, and this is showing exactly that, one half. It took 10 seconds instead of a couple of hours to do the discharge. This is looking like a pretty handy meter. I like it so far. Now let's try something that it is not intended to do and see how it handles it. I have here my deep cycle battery bank. It's being reconfigured at the moment, hooked up to this inverter, and uh, you've probably seen this from my other videos, but a bunch of batteries in here. So what happens when you test a bunch of batteries in parallel with one of these meters? You can't do it, it won't give you the right result, but you can still get useful information if you interpret it properly. In any case, I'm just going to hook this up to a random point here. This one's positive, I'll hook it up there, and uh, I'll pick a negative. I'll just pick this one over here randomly. This negative. So it's hooked up to this battery bank. I think there's six batteries or something in this bank right now. Turn it on, hit OK. I don't know why they make you go through all that. You should just be able to hit one button in my opinion, but very minor, not a big deal. And there you go, 13 volts for this battery bank, 0.72 milliohms. It actually gives me a reading. It only claims that it measures up to 1200 cranking amps or something like that, but uh, it actually does a lot more than advertised, which I like that. I was hoping that it wouldn't just say overload or something, it actually gives you a useful number. 4200 cranking amps for this battery bank, now that it's all connected up in parallel. And it actually works. Now you aren't actually measuring all the batteries in parallel because I have all this cabling in here. That cabling does have some resistance, but you can see that it's not all that significant. In any case, you can measure a battery bank with this. So the Centec Digital Battery Analyzer. What do I think about it? Would I recommend it? I like it. I really like it. This gives you a lot of information about batteries that a lot of the bigger names don't give you. If you buy a Schumacher, for example, a uh, tester like this, it just gives you a couple of LEDs that say good or bad. Useless in my opinion. Actually, like, this actually gives you the exact milliohms. It seems repeatable and it seems pretty accurate based on the battery specifications. The voltage that it reads appears to be pretty much spot on. 
very correct. I tested a few different batteries with it. I could test more, but I just tested a few. And it did tell us what batteries were weak and how weak they were. So it does seem to do exactly what it's ad for advertised to do, and it does it pretty well. In terms of construction quality, I wouldn't brag about it. Um, this is not something that you just want to throw in your toolbox and let rattle around in there. I wouldn't expect it to last. But really, it doesn't feel that bad. It seems to be of reasonable quality, especially considering the price point. So, I would recommend it. This is a great tool to have if you have batteries that you want to monitor and maintain. And pretty much everybody who owns a car does. Now, you could go to an auto store and they'll just give you a pass-fail on your battery. They probably fail, so you buy a new one from them, right? But uh, this, you can do it yourself. And uh, I'm glad I purchased it. This is a good value. Now, anyone who stuck around long enough to watch this video to its conclusion, I should mention how to use one of these. And I'm not going to go into details. I plan to do that later on. Hopefully I get around to it. But the basics of how to use one of these, you could use it exactly like they say in the manual. <clears throat> I would not do that. If you're using this for a car, 500 cranking amps is a very reasonable number. 500 will very easily start any automobile out there, even if it originally came with an 800 cranking amp ba battery. They have to factor in all kinds of things. Maybe it's minus 40 Fahrenheit. Cars have to start when it's minus 40 outside. If yours doesn't, you have a problem with your vehicle. They always should start. It could have had the battery drained. Maybe you left your headlights on for a couple of hours. And, yeah, vehicles are designed so that they still start with a par partially discharged battery. Maybe there's some sort of fuel system issue. You put in bad fuel. You have a partially plugged fuel filter. Who knows? All kinds of things. Your spark plugs are nearing their end of life. There's lots of reasons why it may need more, more uh, cranking amps than, uh, than what's really reasonable. And vehicles are always designed for that. So, I would just connect this up to the battery <clears throat> if I was doing this for my car. Hook this up here. Turn it on, and when it tells you to, to uh, type in the cranking amps, I just leave this at 500. That's a really good number. If you have 500, your battery's still great. I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Now, you could use it like they say in the manual. Here we say that, oh, it's good, right? It has uh, 488 cranking amps. Great. Now, you could also use this <clears throat> like it's meant to be used. Hook it up, and here you type in your cranking amp capacity. This battery had 650 cold cranking amps. So we can go here and type in 650. This is where I disagree with the manual. Because if you're doing this test when it's 0 degrees Fahrenheit outside, then you're doing it properly. If you're doing this test when it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside, you're getting a bogus reading, and it doesn't work the way you expect. So if I hit OK here on 650, I get the wrong reading because this battery is 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And you could do a lookup table to see what it's really supposed to be for this temperature, but I believe this battery is somewhere around 800 when it's new. Cranking amps. So I'm just going to say 800 cranking amps. Kind of a pain entered in this thing, but 800 and hit OK. And this will give you a direct readout of how good the battery is. Here we have 12.66 volts. I should probably recharge it. And I typed in 800 cranking amps, and it only has 486. And it shows me that my battery is about 60% good. And uh, it's just up to you at what point you want to replace your battery. But this battery is only maybe 60%. Now, if you're maintaining a bank of batteries, a bunch of deep cycle batteries, for example, to run an inverter, then you would use this differently. The proper way to use a conductance meter for an application like that, which is really what I bought it for, is to hook it up to your battery bank. I realize this is just one battery, but let's just pretend there's a bunch of them here. You have new batteries that you know are in good condition, and you take a baseline reading. <clears throat> you hook this thing up, turn it on, let it go, and it'll give you a milliohm reading. Write down that milliohm reading, that's your starting point. And, uh, once this rises about 20% or so, then the, the, the batteries are basically assumed to be end of life. For a residential application, I'd let them go significantly further than 20%, but that's up to your discretion. And you can disconnect the batteries and measure each one individually. 
That's the best way to do it, or you can keep them all together as a bank, and it'll measure the health of the bank. You'll then have to split the batteries apart to figure out which one is bad if your battery bank starts getting weak. But that's the very basics of how to use a meter like this. And I'll turn that off and conclude the video. Thanks for watching.